what you're going to be seeing in this video is just a recap over what I've talked about previously in some of my other videos about this topic, about the chicken discussion, and whether or not it's clean. But in this video, I'm going to be presenting some of that information in a little better way. And then also I'm going to be going over some new information that's going to further clarify uh, what Leviticus 1120 is talking about. So first of all, I want to kind of start this off by going into the mindset of what some people uh, may have when they're reading Leviticus 11.20. So you're looking at Leviticus 11.20, as you can see right here, and you're reading it and you see that all fowls that creep going upon all four shall be an abomination unto you. So you're looking at the dietary law, you see this verse and you're thinking, well, the chicken creeps, right? And the chicken seems to go upon all four toes. So is that saying that the chicken is an abomination? That it shouldn't be eaten and that it's unclean? So what I want to go through in this video is just take a look at Leviticus 11.20 and show whether or not it's saying that the chicken is unclean. And... We're going to do a little bit of looking at the English first, then going into the Hebrew and the Greek to kind of get a good understanding of what this is talking about. So, you know, the main reason why I'm doing this video is because I've seen a few videos where people are coming out and saying that the chicken is unclean and some a few comments as well. And I just want to clear up some uh misunderstandings I think people have on this topic. Okay, and what we're going to do is just go ahead and start off with Leviticus 11, and let's go to verse 13. It says, And these are they which ye shall have an abomination among the fowls, they shall not be eaten. They are an abomination, the eagle, the ostrich, and the osprey. So it's listing all these birds that are an abomination. Okay, then you, you go down to verse 20. It says, all fowls that creep going upon all four shall be an abomination unto you. Yet these may eat of every flying creeping thing that goeth upon all four, which have legs above their feet to leap with all upon the earth. Even these of them may ye eat the locust after his kind, and the bald locust after his kind, and the beetle after his kind, and the grasshopper after his kind. But all other flying creeping things which have four feet shall be an abomination unto you. Right here we have, through, you know, verse 13 through 23, we have a section where it's talking about uh, various flying things that you are not allowed to eat and also some that you can eat um there are there have been people who've gone to verse 20 and looked at it and said hey wait a minute uh the chicken seems to creep and go upon four toes so it's an abomination right well when you actually take a look at just that interpretation you see that that cannot be true and why is that well if i can show you a bird that is similar to the chicken in that it mainly just creeps, it doesn't fly too much, and that it also has four toes. If I were to show you that bird right there, a lot of people would say that it's unclean, right? Well, how about if I show you that in the Bible, the Most High actually declared that that bird was clean? Now that brings up an issue with that interpretation, right? Because if I find a bird that seems to creep mainly and walks on four toes, has four toes on each feet, and I, we can see at the most I says it's clean, then we have a problem with that interpretation because that would those those two things would not align. So as you guys can see on my screen, we have a picture of a quail. And this is just a website that gives a bunch of quail facts. And we're gonna take a look at the habits of the quail to see if it aligns with the habits of the chicken. We're gonna scroll down and let's take a look at this paragraph right here. 
Quail spend most of their time on the ground, scratching at the soil to dig up food. Chickens spend most of their time on the ground as well. It says quail are very sociable birds. Okay, let's skip that. Uh, they are somewhat laid back birds, preferring to walk on the ground rather than fly. But if startled, they can explode into flight at a speed of up to 40 miles per hour. However, quail cannot endure long flights. They usually live their entire lives within a 40 acre radius. This reminds us a lot of the chicken where they mainly just walk. Okay, there are, and let's understand that ch uh, chicken can fly. Okay, chicken can fly. And let's, let's go here. Uh, I mean, this is Wikipedia, but still you can look at videos where you see chicken flying i mean you just youtube that and you can look at that uh, it says domestic chickens are not capable of long distance flight wait a minute that sounds similar to something that i read before it says however quail cannot endure long flights so that's similar to the chicken right let's go back to here all right so as you can see right here it says domestic chickens are not capable of long distance flight so when we take a look at this, this sounds familiar to something we just read about the quail, right? Quail cannot endure long flights. So both the quail and the chicken cannot endure long flights. So we see that they have that in common. Now it says, although lighter birds are generally capable of flying for short distances, such as over fences or into trees where they were naturally roost, Chickens may occasionally fly briefly to explore their surroundings, but generally do so only to flee perceived danger. Right here, the quail. It says, um, uh, where is it? It says, they are somewhat laid back birds preferring to walk on the ground rather than fly. But if startled, they can explode into flight at a speed of up to 40 miles per hour. So we have that both birds, you know, they see something that you know scares them then they'll start flying okay so both the chicken and the quill do that right now let's look at something else okay so and let's not go there um this right here says quail again they spend most of their time on the ground right here they spend most of their time on the ground and let's see what and again this is wikipedia but let's see what this has to say about what quail do on the ground so it says this is a terrestrial species feeding on seeds and insects on the ground so it stay it stays on the ground uh, it's notoriously difficult to see keeping hidden in crops and reluctant to fly saying the same thing we saw before now look at this preferring to creep away instead notice how he uses this word creep that we also see in leviticus eleven twenty. so are we saying that this quail this bird right here the quail fits the description of leviticus eleven twenty? it creeps and it goes on all four toes so is it is it an abomination now i i haven't showed you guys you know the toes and everything to see let's let's just take a look at that All right, so verse 20 talks about going upon all four. Now, let's just say, for instance, that this is actually talking about going upon all four toes, like some people say it is, right? So the problem that we have is chicken, and people will say, oh, the chicken it has four toes, right? Well, the problem with that is not all chicken have four toes. Uh, let's take a look at this right here it is talking about chicken feet right it says no bird has more than four toes except chickens of the dorking uh and all these other um you know different types of chickens right all of which have five toes so it's saying that some chicken have five toes it says in these breeds the extra toe arises above the base of the hallux and projects upward never touching the ground in the silky, the extra toes often lie nearly in the same plane as the hullux. Okay, so some birds only have three toes while the ostrich has two toes. So right here, it said that some chicken have five toes. So if they have five toes, 
how are they going to al align with uh, this right here going upon all four? Because if they have five toes, then they do not go upon all four toes. I mean, you can see that this wouldn't work. OK, so since some chickens have five toes, would that make them clean according to Leviticus 11 verse 20? Since they technically wouldn't go upon all four. Well, let's keep taking a look at this. Um, we know a lot of chicken, they do have four toes. I've looked up, looked up some uh, pictures of this. You can see right here, one, two, three, four. They got four toes, you know, three that are on the ground. One kind of one rises up above the others. And now let's take a look at the quail and see if it's similar to this. Um, let's take a look at and this is really right here this is a drawing as you can see it has one two three then that other one just pointing back okay and when you actually take a look at you know just different sources and things it says um and this is just talking about quail right uh distinguishing features quail are terrestrial birds again they like to be on the ground with short round wings stout legs with four toes Hind toe is elevated and does not come in contact with the ground and short uh, conical bills. So they also have four toes, right? Well, according to this, we already know that the quail, they like to creep. They like to stay on the ground, similar to the chicken, and they have four toes, as we can see. So... According to the interpretation that a lot of people have of Leviticus 11.20, that would make them unclean. They would be an abomination. Let's just go further and, you know, just see if we can get some better images of their toes. They're like, uh, these pictures are not zoomed in, so you can't really see them as well. Now, right there, this is, you know, four toes right there. Um, I'm trying to get a picture of just an actual quail where I can really see what the toes are looking like. Now this, uh, as you can see right here, this New Zealand quail, you got four toes, one, two, three, four, you know, the one sticking back. There's a king quail right here. And now this is where you can see an actual, you know, picture where you can actually see how many toes that. So right here, one, two, three, and that fourth one is sticking back behind it. So the quail also have four toes you know like people are because they, they creep right and they have these four toes and according to how some people interpret leviticus eleven twenty, they would be unclean but let's take a look at how the most high or let's take a look at if the most high says the quail are clean or unclean All right, so we're going to see right here in Exodus chapter 16, and we're going to start at verse 11 and see if the Most High says quails are clean or unclean. Let's look at verse 11. And Yahuwah spake unto Moses, saying, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel. Speak unto them, saying, At even ye shall eat flesh, and in the morning ye shall be filled with bread. Ye shall know that I am Yahuwah your Elohim. And it came to pass... That at even the quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, the dew lay round about the host. So what did we just read right here? Well, the children of Israel were complaining, right? It says uh, the most I heard their murmurings. And then he said to them at even, they're going to be eating flesh. In the morning, they're going to be filled with bread. So what flesh did he give them to eat? Verse 13 tells us that at even the quails came up. So the Most High gave the children of Israel quail to eat. Therefore, the quail are clean, according to the Most High. So if someone tries to come and say that, well, quail are unclean, this easily disproves that. And also, if someone tries to come and say that just because a bird, um, according to Leviticus 11.20, mainly walks and has four toes on each foot that that makes it unclean if someone tells you that and gives you that interpretation you can show them that that is wrong because the quail mainly creep just like the chicken they have four toes just like some chicken and 
they are not an abomination. The Most High allowed the children of Israel to eat quail. So now that we see right here that this whole interpretation to where it's saying that, you know, if a bird mainly walks and it walks on four toes and that that means it's unclean. We see that that interpretation is wrong. So what is the correct interpretation? And actually, before we get into that, I want to actually go and take a look at just some. Let's, let's just put some common sense into this going upon all four. Right. If this is talking about four toes. That wouldn't make sense for the chicken. The chicken don't have four toes. The quail don't have four toes. Now you guys are like, what are you, what are you talking about? You just show that quail have, you know, four toes and everything. Well, if you look at how many toes chicken have in total, they have eight. Okay, now you know. Now you see what I'm saying. <laughs> so they do not walk on four toes. They don't have two toes on each foot. That would make more sense for this. They have four toes. I mean, they have eight toes. Four toes on each foot. So this verse talking about going upon all four. You know, just by using some common sense, this can't be talking about uh, the amount of toes chicken have, the amount of toes they bird has. Because as you can see, as you can just tell, you know, like like us, we humans, we do not have five toes. We have ten. Okay, we do not hop on one leg. We walk on two legs, so we use ten toes. Just like how the chicken doesn't just hop on one leg, it walks on two feet. And it has eight toes on those two feet. So, eight toes added up together between those two feet. So, what we know right here is that whole interpretation that people have is incorrect okay so i just wanted to bring that out here and show that just by looking at the english and just looking up some basic things you know we didn't do anything too complicated here just look at, and also just using some common sense we can see that if a bird mainly walks and it mainly walks on all four toes that that does not conclude that that bird is unclean so some of you may be wondering, well, what is this verse talking about? Because in English, that seems to mean, I mean, that seems to be what it's actually talking about. Well, I'm going to actually go into the Greek, uh, Septuagint, and also the Hebrew, and also the context that is around verse 20 in Leviticus 11 to actually um, let us see what the Most High was trying to say here. So, Again, we're going to go into the Hebrew and the Greek and the Septuagint and look at the context around Leviticus 11.20 to get a better understanding of what Leviticus 11.20 is actually saying. So we know not how to interpret verse 20. So how do we interpret it? Well, we know it can't be talking about toes, right? But if it's not talking about toes, what is it talking about? Well, the other thing it could be talking about is feet. Okay. And the question some of you might be having is, do we have any evidence for that? Well, when you go into the context of Leviticus 1120, you can see that we actually, just by looking at the English, have some clear evidence for this referring to four feet let's go to verse 21 right here it says yet these may eat of every flying creeping thing that goeth upon all four which have legs above their feet to leap with all upon the earth so notice how in here when it says going upon all four right afterward just talking about which have legs above their feet to leap with all upon the earth now in here this isn't the best scripture to go to let's just go to verse 23 it says but all other flying creeping things which have four feet shall be an abomination unto you so right here it's referring to flying creeping things just like in verse 
20, it says fowls that creep. So fowls, you know, things that fly that also creep that go upon all four are going to be an abomination unto you. And in verse 23, it says, but all other flying, creeping things which have four feet shall be an abomination unto you. So just by looking at this English, we can see a connection. OK, this is talking about going upon all four right here. This is talking about which have four feet. Uh, both these things is describing as being an abomination. So that is just, you know, a little bit of the context right there. Now, I know one question you guys may have is what bird out there actually has four feet or what bird creeps on four limbs on four feet? Now, um, this right here is, you know, something that you know, is understandably confusing but just by looking at the previous verse we see something interesting and this is one way to look at it this is not the this is not going to be my final uh interpretation on what this is saying but let's just take a look at this verse 19 says at the very end now actually let's let's get a little bit more context Verse 13 says and these are they which ye shall have an abomination among the fowls it lists different birds right that are an abomination within the this uh list of unclean fowls it lists in verse 19 at the very end the bat right here the bat so when you look at this word bat right here some people may say oh bats not you know like these other birds well it's still in this list of unclean fowls okay so keep that in mind so when you go to verse 20 where it's talking about unclean fowls, which is just right after verse 19. Keep in mind right here. It says all fowls that creep going upon all four shall be an abomination unto you. So what's interesting, though, is when you actually take a look at how this bat seems to walk or how it creeps. Um, now. I suggest you look at videos, but we don't even need to do that. Really, we can just look at images. And the reason why I'm not, you know, showing videos is because, you know, copyright and things of that nature. But just take a look at this right here. Don't tell I mean, you, you can't tell me that that does not look like it's walking on four limbs. You can't see the last one or the, the fourth one, but you can, it's right back there. Um, and this is a better picture right here. You know, one, two, three, four. And just look at the way these things actually walk this is a skeleton look at the way these things actually walk it looks like they are walking it looks like they are walking on four feet okay so that is something that we need to keep in mind so i could easily see someone interpreting uh, verse 20 as just referring to you know the bat it says you know because the bat when you watch those videos it creeps you know on four feet and in the previous verse, it lists it as an abomination, a foul that is an abomination, right? Well, really, I don't necessarily like this interpretation. I don't like verse 20 as referring to, um, you know, the bat, because when we actually go into the Hebrew, we're going to see that this word fouls does not actually mean what we think it is saying. OK, uh, and we'll go into that a little bit later before I go into the Hebrew which is, you know, what's really going to clear up a lot of things. I want to go into the Greek, which is going to clear up some things. So I'm going to go into the Septuagint to show that when you see this phrase going upon all four, it is not talking about going upon four toes. It is actually talking about going upon four feet. All right, so here it is. Let's see what the Septuagint says about Leviticus 11.20. Is it talking about going upon four toes or something else? Leviticus 11.20 in the Septuagint says, and we're starting right here, and all winged creatures that creep which go upon four feet are abominations to you. But these may ye eat of the creeping winged animals which go upon four feet, which have legs above their feet to leap with on the earth we clearly see in verse 20 it's talking about creatures that go upon four feet not four toes so someone you know believes in the septuagint which some have argued is more reliable 
uh, as far as the first five books of the Bible, then the King James version version. And even, you know, maybe within the Hebrew, if someone actually follows this book and they try to tell you that the chicken is clean because it creeps and has four toes, then they are clearly going against what the Septuagint has to say, because this verse is not talking about animals that creep, which have four toes. It's talking about animals that creep, which go upon four feet. So this verse, according to the Septuagint, cannot be talking about chickens, which aligns with what we've discovered with the quail and how it has similar features to the chicken and how the Most High actually said that it was clean. So let's keep reading. Uh, verse 22 says, And these of them ye shall eat, the caterpillar and his like, and the atticus and his like, and the cantharis and his like, and the locust and his like. Verse 23, and every creeping thing from among the birds, which has four feet, is an abomination to you. So this even right here, it says birds, but notice it says which has four feet. Again, some of you may be like, what bird has four feet? You know, I mean, this verse in the King James is, says fowl. We know bad is a fowl and it seems to walk on four uh, limbs. Now, the thing with this translation that we see is that uh what we'll actually find in the hebrew is a connection between this word right here birds and also this word you know winged creatures that creep and also um uh let's see verse 13 where it says birds right here we'll see a connection there and we'll get into that into a little bit. But the main thing we all need to understand is that the Septuagint is clearly saying that this is talking about uh, animals which have, or this is talking about, it says winged creatures which go upon four feet. And, um, you know, you may be like, what kind of creature goes on four feet? Well, we're going to get a better understanding of this. I mean, here's a preview, verse, just read verse 21. But, um, we're going to get an understanding of what this is actually referring to as we go into the Hebrew. So as you guys can see right here, we're in the interlinear Bible. And right now we're just taking a look at the English and the Hebrew at the same time, just to kind of get an understanding of what's going on here. What is this word, um, you know, uh, foul that we see in verse 13. What is the definition for that? What is the definition for the word fouls that we see in verse 20? And also what is the definition of flying creeping things that we see in verse 21 and verse 23? So let's we're just going to take a look at that. And this is why we go into the Hebrew so we can actually get a better understanding of what these words are actually saying. So we're going to go into the interlinear. And what we see is in verse 20, which is the main verse that we're talking about. Again, in Hebrew, we go from right to left. So that's why you see this is going from right to left. Starting here in verse 20, you see that you, uh, right here, it says all that creep. It says flying insects. Now, this is ju we're jumping ahead a little bit here. But the main thing is that this word right here is the same word that we'll, we see right here, all fouls. Um, when you go back into here, it lists this word as the Hebrew 5775. The Hebrew 5775, remember that number. And the reason why I want you to remember that number is because it also shows up here in verse 21, you know, the same, again, the flying insects that creep. It's listed as the same Hebrew word. And you can even look at this word right here and see that it matches up with this word right here in the Hebrew. Now, when we go to verse 13, let's see what that word for foul actually says. Verse 13 starts here. And these uh, you shall regard as an abomination among. Now, right here it says the birds. That's how this is translating it. But it has the same Hebrew word that we just saw in the previous, I mean, the other two verses, verse 20 and 23, the Hebrew 5775. So when you actually take a look at this Hebrew 5775, you see that it's uh, pronounced oaf, I believe. And the definition is flying creatures in general, according to the Strong's Concordance. And that is actually a good translation because when we go into the Brown Java Briggs. It also says the same thing, flying creatures in general, you know, 
but more specifically, it can mean, you know, like a fowl such as a bird or insects. So right here in this, uh, it has in the Brown Driver Briggs concordance, um, you'll see that it actually lists the different definitions for this word oath, the Hebrew 5775, and it gives, you know, scriptures that fit that definition. So for instance, the first definition is a fowl or a bird, and it lists the different verses that uh, basically fit that. And notice how you have Levit Leviticus 1113 right here. However, number two right here, it says winged insects. So winged insects, clean, unclean is a definition, is another definition for this. And look at the verses it lists right here. Leviticus 11.20, Leviticus 11.21, Leviticus 11.23. And we'll hit these two verses in Deuteronomy a little bit later. But what you see is that when you go into Leviticus 11, 20, 21, 23, that word oath, the Hebrew 5775, is actually should be translated as winged insects. And it really makes sense when you go into this. It makes more sense in translating this as fowls, right? Because now you don't have to talk about, you know, birds that are actually, you know, having four feet and things like that. You can talk about insects. Now, some of you may be like, wait, wait, did you just say insects have four feet? Now, we're going to talk about this in a little bit, but let's take a look at what this is actually saying in uh, these verses. Uh, we're going to go back to Leviticus 11, verse 20, and see that it says all fowls. Now, this word fowls should be all winged insects that creep. Uh, going upon all four are going to be an abomination unto you. Yet, these may eat of every flying, creeping thing. Now, this should be winged insect that goeth upon all four, which have legs above their feet to leap with all upon the earth. Even these of them may ye eat, the locust after his kind, and the bald locust after his kind, and the beetle after his kind, and the grasshopper after his kind. But all other winged insects, which have four feet, shall be an abomination unto you. This translation as uh, the Hebrew 5775, oath being winged insect through verse, you know, from verse 20 to 23, actually brings more clarity to what it's actually saying here, because you see that this you know verse 20 is not really a part of you know verses 13 through 19 it's really a part of verses 20 through 23 because this is how the this is this is the pattern this is the organization of this law right here we look at verse 13 through 19 it is referring to fowls that are unclean when you go into verses 20 through 23 it's referring to insects that are clean or unclean right so when you look at this it's saying all winged insects that creep going upon all four are going to be an abomination to you but there's exceptions to this and these are the exceptions uh of these winged insects that go upon all four uh and these exceptions are in verse 22 the locust the bald locust the beetle and a grasshopper these are the exceptions but Every single other in winged insect which have four feet, you're not supposed to eat. So verse 20, all it says, all winged insects are going to be an abomination. Verse 21, but ex there are exceptions to this rule for the winged insects. And it gives you and it gives you examples of these winged insects in verse 22. And then in verse 23, it says what it says in verse 20 again, but all the other winged insects which have four feet are an abomination. So that is the organization of this. Now, again, you guys may be wondering, what is he talking about? Is he saying that insects have four feet? We clearly know that, you know, insects have six legs, you know, by definition. So they, that means they probably should have uh, six feet, of course. But let's see what this is actually saying in verse 21. It's interesting how, you know, the, the Bible does this here. Um, and, but what we see in verse 21 is yet these may eat of every winged insect that goeth upon all four. So it says they go upon all four. We know that's talking about going upon four feet. Right. But notice what it says here, which have legs above their feet to leap with all upon the earth. So right here is saying that they have four feet in addition to those feet. It says they have legs above their feet to leap with all upon the earth. And then it lists different insects, 
and one of them is locust another is a grasshopper uh let's just type in grasshopper real quick right here and let's click on, on some images it's making a distinction between these four feet right here and these two jumping legs it's saying it has four uh feet and then also two jumping legs and when you actually take a look at um you know just you, we can research this when you take a look at this you know it does you know there's different sources that do describe you know these insects you know grasshopper has having you know four feet and then they have you know these two legs that are just mainly for jumping okay So when we go back into this right here into verse 21, um, it's saying that um, these insects, they go upon four feet that they mainly use for walking, but they also have additional legs that they use to leap with all upon the earth. And it gives examples of them says even these of them ye may eat. It's giving examples of what it's describing in verse 21, which is a locust, you know, the ball locust beetle, the grasshopper. Now, different people actually have different interpretations on what the you know locust, ball locust, what this is actually talking about. If you noticed earlier in the Septuagint, it lists different insects. But what we are trying to basically get from this is that verse 20 through 23 is talking about um winged insects now maybe in another video i may go into more depth on you know kind of you know what verse 20 what what this is talking about about creeping um you know four feet and things of that nature but in this i just want to show you that um really within the hebrew it does say that um verses 20 through 21 is talking about winged insects they're talking about winged insects and not birds. So that is one mistake people make just by looking at the English and that they just say, they look at it, it says all fowl. So they think it's talking about birds. So that's why they, they'll bring up chicken saying, oh man, that's unclean. Well, that, that if you go into the Hebrew, you won't make that mistake. Okay. So the Hebrew confirms that the chicken is not unclean according to verse 20. It confirms that the quail is not unclean, although we know that the Most High declared the quail to be to not be unclean. So if a bird creeps and it's, it walks with four toes, that is not saying that that this is verse is not saying that that is an abomination. It's saying that um, there are certain um, flying insects that you know have four crawling legs that are an abomination. If they are not these insects that are listed in verse twenty-two, then they are an abomination. Okay, that is what that is the actual correct uh, interpretation of what verse 20 is talking about. All right. So, again, all winged insects that creep are unclean except for the select few that are found in verse 22. So now that we can actually see what this verse is talking about within the context of the English, the, you know, going into the Greek Septuagint, also even the Hebrew, we can see that it's all saying the same thing. Now we're going to go into basically the, di this, the dietary law, but in Deuteronomy 14 to see what that is talking about there. And we're going to go into the Hebrew. All right, so this is the last topic we're going to cover in this video. And what we're doing is going to Deuteronomy, and this isn't, <laughs> what we're doing is going to Deuteronomy 14, and we're looking at this dietary law that it has in here because Leviticus 11 has the dietary law, and also Deuteronomy 14 uh, also is like a cross reference to that, and that it has the dietary law. So, Deuteronomy 14, and we're, we're taking a look at verse. 11 uh, is where we're going to start. And notice how it says right here, uh, of all clean birds ye shall eat. So it doesn't say fowls, but notice how it makes a distinction, birds. 
uh, and then it lists all these different birds. It lists all these birds, and within that list, notice how it has the bat. So again, some people may say a bat's you know not really shouldn't be with the birds, but it is listing that in there. Um, when you go to verse 19, though, this is where we're going to start getting to what we were talking about, right? Verse 19, and every creeping thing that flieth is unclean unto you. They shall not be eaten. If someone were to just take a look at this verse, they may confuse us as, again, talking about the chicken. Every, a chicken creeps and it can fly, so it's unclean, right? Well, and this verse is actually a cross-reference to what we see in Leviticus 11.20. The problem with that is, and this doesn't even talk about having four toes at all. So, when you take a look at something like the chicken, it creeps as we've seen through you know what we've looked at previously it creeps and it also flies so you're saying that so according to this you might say that the quail is unclean we know that's wrong because the most high fed the children of Israel quail so that is him saying that the quail is clean what we see in verse 20 those but of all clean fowls ye may eat so it says that right here and the problem again that we're running into is the English when we go into the Hebrew, we can get a clearer understanding. And what the clearer understanding that we'll get is verse 11 through verse 18 is clearly talking about birds. And even, this says birds. It clearly trans, They got this right here. They translated that correctly. But when you go into verse 19 through 20, we'll see again. This is talking about winged insects. All it's saying is that every is saying that every winged insect is unclean unto you they should not be eaten except for all the clean winged insects that you can eat that are described in leviticus 11 uh 22. so let's go into the interlinear uh bible again and see that it says um and right here it says all you know this is the word that's translated here but this is this is the hebrew 5775 oath and right here you that's in verse 20 and right here in verse 21 it is and my bad uh actually i wanted to go into verse 19. all right so in the interlinear in verse 19 it's saying in every cream thing that flies so right here that flies this is talking about oh again the hebrew 57 75 you go into verse 20 it has the same word, oh, 5775. And let's see what this translates as. And I, you know, hinted at this earlier. This is talking about winged insects uh, again, just like we saw in Leviticus 1120. Same old, same old thing that we just saw. Deuteronomy 1419 and also Deuteronomy 1420 should be translated as winged insects. So now with our under, correct understanding of what these words actually mean, we're gonna go back into this and see that again, like we said previously, 11 through 19 is talking about birds that are not supposed to be, not supposed to be eaten, or 11 through 18, I should say, is talking about birds that should not be eaten. eaten. And verse 19 and 20 are talking about you know winged insects. So we should read this as in every uh, creeping winged insect is unclean unto you; they should not be eaten, except for the clean when winged insects that you can eat that's what this is saying so it's saying the same thing basically in leviticus that we saw in leviticus eleven twenty, um verse 20 you know the the says all winged insects that are going upon all four are going to be an abomination to you except for the specific ones right here but all other winged insects which have four feet are an abomination so we see the same pattern in deuteronomy 11 uh 20 that we see in deuteronomy 14 20 so we see the connection there so now let's basically just kind of sum up everything that we went over so in this video we just kind of went over leviticus 11 20 and we went over the interpretation that some people have in that verse 20 is saying that chicken is unclean and we see that the way some people will do this is that they'll say that the chicken is a fowl and it mainly creeps and it walks on four toes and so it's an abomination. But we 
looked at just just common sense and disproved that basically by knowing that chicken do not have four toes they have eight and we also took a look that we, look, we looked at some sources that said that there are some types of chicken that have five toes so some chickens have five toes so the question is do that are they unclean as well since they don't according to some people go on all four they'll go on all five right well we looked at going upon all four and you know we were like maybe this is what is what is this talking about and actually before we did that we looked at you know just another bird that is similar to the chicken and that it creeps and that it walks on four toes and we saw that that bird was the quill but when we looked throughout the old testament we saw the most i said that that bird was clean because he gave that to the children of israel to eat so that means that we saw that just because a bird creeps mainly and walks on four toes that that bird is not necessarily an abomination and it, because the most i gave uh, that type of bird to the children of Israel to eat and so that would make it clean so that would take out that whole interpretation that people have about you know birds that mainly walk that you know uh, are walking on four toes are an abomination that destroys that whole interpretation so we're like that interpretation is wrong what is the correct interpretation uh, so we started off by you know looking at the going upon all four we took a look in to you know the greek and we're like maybe this is time out four feet because the greek clearly says that well you know walking or going upon four feet it does not say going upon four toes so and and really when you take a look at the context of this verse 23 is talking about you know all other flying things all other flying creeping things which have four feet shall be an abomination so it also says four feet right there so we we're like maybe in the context even though the english is saying the same thing that the greek septuagint is also saying now the question we brought up is well is this talking about birds that have four feet i don't know of any birds that have four feet or that walk on four feet uh we, we gave an example of the bat that lists that it lists right here in verse 19 right before verse 20 and the bat actually walks it seems to walk on four limbs so is that what this verse uh 20 is talking about you know the bat because we know that the bat is an abomination well what we also saw was that you know the maybe a better look at what this verse is actually talking about is you know if we actually can understand what fowls mean in verse 20 and also what uh, the flying creepy things are referring to that you know verse 23 and also in verse 21 if we can actually discover what those those uh words are talking about and the way we did this is not by just looking at the english to see what it has to say we went back into the hebrew and we saw that in verse 13 through 19 it is actually talking about uh birds and in verse 20 through 23 is talking about winged insects uh so it's talking about winged insects that go upon four feet so another thing that we brought up that may see, seem confusing is well insects have six feet well in verse 21 it describes uh these winged insects and it says they go upon all four go upon all four feet right but they also have legs above their feet to leap with all upon the earth so they have jumping legs we took, looked at a picture of this and we see the, this grasshopper has four legs right here that are similar than two separate legs that are used for jumping and that is what we can see there and you know later on again i may go into uh do another video go more in depth on what this is actually referring to here because uh, some people um they may use this to try to say oh well uh the bible is not aligning with science but we're gonna take a further look at what that is actually saying now after this we went into deuteronomy 14 and verse 20 we saw that it was saying the same thing so really this whole interpretation that people have about verse 20 is incorrect and i'm not saying you know it's 
uh, everybody has this interpretation, but I, I've seen that in some videos. And so the whole point of this video was just to try to go against that interpretation that some people may have on this topic, that just because a chicken mainly walks and walks on four toes, that it is an abomination. We can see clearly that based on the context of the whole Bible, the context of Leviticus 11, 20 and the Greek and Septuagint, we can see that all those are saying that that interpretation is wrong. The more correct interpretation is just saying that there are some winged insects that, you know, walk on, you know, they have four walking legs or four walking feet. They have two separate legs that, you know, are separate from that. But it's saying that though there are a lot of those are an abomination, but there are exceptions to that rule. And it gives a list of those. So, again, if someone tries to come to you and say Leviticus 11 verse 20 is saying that the chicken is unclean, you can see that that is actually not the case. Shalom.